Okay, it looks like more people have joined. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. Uh, welcome to the special meeting of the Yakima Health District. Our meeting tonight is going to uh, is starting at 5.30 right now. And we have allotted two hours to 7.30. Um, my want is to, if the discussion goes further than that or beyond that point, we can just, we will continue the discussion on whatever the topic is at the next meeting. Uh, if we need a little bit more time, we might be able to do that tonight. But if it looks like it's going to be a long uh, discussion, I would rather uh, respect everybody's time tonight and uh, end it at 7.30. Uh, so our next scheduled meeting, uh, you might make a note, is on April 14 at 5.30. I anticipate a lively discussion tonight. Uh, so uh, if you would, um, please stay muted and until, it's opportun until there's opportunity to uh, ask questions or uh, comment. And um, I think we're ready to go. Uh, I welcome again and to everybody and uh, welcome everybody that's tuning in that's uh, in the neighborhood and the community. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm gonna ask uh, uh, Ryan Eibach to uh, do the introductions of guests and staff. Okay, uh, Commissioner Ron Anderson. Here. Dr. Sean Cleary. Here. Commissioner Amanda McKinney. Commissioner Amanda McKinney. Present. Commissioner LaDon Lindy. Uh, here. Dr. Dave Atterbury, citizen member. Uh, here. And Nyla Duvall, city representative. Here. Patricia Byers, city representative. I am here. Okay, so all seven uh, board members are here. Now we'll go on to the Acne Health District staff. Andre Fresco, executive director. Here, thank you. All right, myself, Ryan Ibeck, chief operating officer. Chase Porter, Senior Finance Manager. Chase Porter. Here. Melissa Sixberry, Director of Disease Control. Here. Lillian Bravo, Director of Public Health Partnerships. Here. John McGee, Director of Environmental Health. Here. Nathan Johnson, Local Emergency Response Coordinator. Here. Dr. Larry Yecka, Health Officer. Here. Wendy Garcia, Public Health Technician. Here. Victoria Reyes, Administrative Assistant. Present. James Elliott, Attorney. Good evening. All right, and then if anyone else that is present, if they could put their name and affiliation in the chat box, um, then so we have record uh, for the minutes. Please do that now. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, next, we will... Uh, go to the board business and uh, director Andre Fresco uh, will be uh, presenting. Uh, Commissioner, do we oh, want yes, to uh, review of submitted public comments? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, let's go ahead and back up. <laughs> let's you. back up and do that. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we have 16 public comments that were submitted. Um, <laughs> The public comments and any questions um, are not necessarily addressed specifically. However, if any board members do want to address or answer any of the questions that are asked during the board meeting, um, feel free to do so. So the first comment that we have is uh, from Maria Jett um, in behalf of Stella and Jesse. Uh, so they write, we live in Natchez Heights. Maria is our teacher this year because of COVID. Please don't let the neighbor turn our water off at the schoolhouse. If you do it, we wouldn't have very much help with our schoolwork because our dad has a lot of work to do and he is a single dad and the animal, animals need water too. Next one is from Linda Linaway and Rick Linaway. We are against commissioner control of the Board of Health. We are against the com county commissioner's proposed changes. Next one is Tanya Patnode. No to commissioner control of Board of Health. No to county commissioners proposed changes. Next one is from Amy Hostetler. No to commissioner control of the Board of Health. No to the county commissioners proposed changes. Next one is from Angie Gerard. So 
Substitute House Bill 1152 has passed the House and is on the Senate. It has strong support and will likely become law. One thing that has been overwhelmingly supported on both sides of the aisle is the section on composition of health district boards, which in part states the boards of county commissioners may by resolution or ordinance provide for elected officials from cities and towns and persons other than elected officials as members of the district board of health, so long as the city and county elected officials do not constitute a majority of the total membership of the board. This will become effective July 1st, 2022, thus re reversing much of ordinance 1-2021. Now with the inevitability of House Bill 1152, I ask that Ordinance 1-2021 be rescinded. Last, I cannot tell you how outraged I was earlier this week when Commissioner McKinney posted a video about making sure our student athletes have an audience, followed by a letter to the governor. Yet our months of talks, letters to the editor, emails to the commissioners, Yakima Herald articles, public comment at commissioners and Board of Health meetings, an online petition with 230 signatures, and 400 plus strong Facebook group have seemingly fallen on deaf ears. Equity is most definitely not the strong suit of the commissioners. Next one is Peggy Steer. No to commissioners control a board of health and their proposed changes. Specifically, every member gets one vote, not members get two votes. Any board member should be eligible to chair the board. The nominating committee should be comprised of entirely, uh, should not be comprised entirely of county commissioners. Next one is Andrea Prentice. Commissioner control of the Board of Health makes no sense to me. I don't think the commissioner's proposed changes will benefit our community. Next one is Sandra Simmons. I, would, I am strongly opposed to the selection of the public health officer for Yakima County who does not have education and, and experience in public health. A local physician with no public health background could be susceptible to to pressure from those in the Yakima County who are more concerned about business interests than they are about community health. If no one with a public health background and experience is available and a local physician is chosen, a family practice physician should be selected. Such a person will have an understanding of community health that would be beneficial to all the people living in Yakima County. Dr. Atterbury is a special and specialist in neurosurgery, would not have the community perspective, and I am also concerned about his history of questionable services and billing. Next one is Lori Curtis. No to commissioner control of Board of Health and no to county commissioner's proposed changes. Joy Clark, as a Yakima County resident, I urge you to vote no to commissioner's control of Board of Health and also no to county commissioner's proposed changes. Next one is Steve Altmeyer. So far, the three county commissioners have seemed to ignore the written comments from the public, which have also been almost universally against the proposed changes in the draft, excuse me, in the draft resolution. The county commissioners stress the need for elected board members rather than unelected board members to be ultimately responsible for the voters and the public health decisions. If you want to truly represent your con constituents, listen to our opposition to your proposed changes. Number one, no one gets two votes. Number two, any board members should be eligible to chair the board. And number three, the nominating committee should be made up, should not be made up of entirely of county commissioners. Next one is Mile Middlestat. No to commissioner control of Board of Health, no to county commissioners proposed changes. Next one is Bridget Russell. I have three main concerns with the county commissioner's recent changes to the Board of Health. No one gets two votes. County commissioners should ha not have more control than any other member. Any board member should, should be eligible to chair the board. The nominating committee should not be made up of only county commissioners. Please listen to your constituents and make these changes. Next one is Mindy Clark. No to commissioner control of Board of Health. No to county commissioner proposed changes. Next one is Wayne Hahn. Please know we do not support Oh, I'm sorry, it's from Wayne and Lori Hahn. Please know we do not support written communications to commissioner control of Board of Health and no support to county commissioners proposed changes. And the last one is from Douglas Fettersville. The selection of a chair of Yakima County Board of Health and the chair's voting authority under Yakima County Code 6.04.0101A Highlight the potential tensions between the jurisdiction of the 
the Yakima County Commissioner's statutory right to enact ordinance affecting the Board of Health under RCW 70.05.030 and the statutory authority granted to the Board of Health by RCW 70.05040. RCW 70.05040 states that the local Board of Health shall elect the chair. It also grants the county commissioners the authority to draft ordinances that set the size and composition of the Board of Health and make provisions for the appointment, term, compensation, or reimbursement of expenses. Is equally silent on the issue of who may serve as a chair. Silence should not necessarily be seen as a green light to exercise authority. Stated another way, just because you can do something does not mean you should do it. At the initial annual meeting, the Board of Health did in fact elect a chair who was also a county commissioner. That eliminated any tension. However, it would be advisable to address the restrictions in the ordinance now before a potential legal fight ensues in the future. A different yet, a different yet related tension exists in granting the chair two votes. While the extra vote provided to the chair was explained by some in the January 27th meeting as being limited to breaking ties in the event of an absence of a member at a meeting or in the event one member abstained from vote, the ordinance as written does not contain those limitations. The two votes granted by the chair by the current ordinance is not limited. What would prevent the county commissioners from drafting an ordinance granting the chair five votes? It would be certainly, it certainly would be efficient and secure the commissioners potential incentive to retain a majority position. However, it would render the other board members votes merely advisory. The statutes being discussed appear to create a board of health that has the trappings of a normal board with full voting authority for each member and not merely advisory. Hopefully the parties can make decisions in a fashion which fairly represents the interests in, of positions in which they are pur purporting to act. This is not always easy, but the transparency would promote public confidence in the ultimate decision. And that is it for the 16 public comments. Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it very much. Now we will move on to the, the board business and uh, Director Andre Fresco presenting. Yes, good evening. Thank you, Commissioner. I appreciate it very much. Uh, welcome to uh, the board and to our guests, thank you for spending your evening with us. Uh, I wanted to begin uh, with our first order of business, uh, which is Board of Health draft resolution discussion. Again, we began this discussion uh, in our previous board meetings. Uh, we're revisiting that and we have uh, guests tonight who are representing the perspective of the county commissioners. I'd like to uh, have James Elliott, the uh, attorney record for the Yakima Health District speak to the issues again because these are serious legal issues and so he can speak to that directly and then introduce our guests. James. Good evening everybody. On January 27th of this year I had presented to this Board of Health a draft resolution that I was asked to prepare based on the areas of the law in which the Board of County Commissioners had authority to make changes to the size and composition of the Board of Health through their ordinance 1-2021. During that meeting, I presented several points and they were related to the ordinance. I walked them through on sort of seven major changes or seven changes that I saw through their ordinance. And after each point, I allowed the members of this board the opportunity to essentially discuss or ask questions or disagree with the presentation and analysis. I think it makes sense tonight that we follow that same and similar fashion to have an effective meeting here. After that last meeting on January 27th, the Board of County Commissioners asked that they could have their attorneys from the prosecutor's office present their position related to Ordinance 1-2021. The prosecutor's office, as I understand it, I can see two of them at least, uh, has two attorneys here who are present to present the, the position and explanation of the county commissioners. I see Joe Brusick and Don Anderson on here. I don't know if there's a third one as well, but at least they're here from the prosecutor's office. Joe and Don, before you start, I would again ask, as you present the issues or the points, I think it makes sense to have an effective meeting to allow board members and uh, questions, concerns, and also the opportunity for myself to respond to some of the issues that may be raised. I think if you do that, I think we can have an effective meeting tonight within two hours. 
So with that, John or Jill or Don, I don't know which one of you is going first, but go ahead. Well, first of all, I, <clears throat> it's an honor and privilege to be here tonight um, representing uh, the interests of the county and really everybody here on, uh, on this, uh, this particular call. This is, this is very important to our community. And obviously I think everyone would agree with that regardless of, of whose side or what you believe is correct or accurate. It's an honor and privilege to be able to discuss our position uh, collectively. But before we quite do that, I, I just wanna, I wanna address the fact that this is not a courtroom, okay? This is, this is uh, the ability for uh, myself as county prosecutor. And for those that don't know me, um, my name is Joe Brusick. I was elected Yakima County prosecutor in 2014 and I serve all of you. And um, another important distinction that I wanna make clear from my perspective is my role and Don's role as our chief civil deputy, but, but namely my role as the elected official is to tell you my role in relation to the county commissioners. Um, prosecutor attorneys have duties and all 39 of us in the state of Washington um, were, were indicated in RCW 36-27020. And it says our duties and the prosecutor attorney and myself shall be legal advisor of the legislative authority, giving it his or her written opinion when required by the legislative authority or the chairperson thereof, touching any subject which the legislative authority may be called or required to act upon relating to the management of county affairs. And essentially that's why Don and I are here. And that is why I am here as your Yakima County prosecutor, because we are tasked with advising, legally advising the county commissioners as the legislative body of Yakima County. But I wanna make it clear as well that the decisions that the body, the legislative body, namely the county commissioners engage in are their decisions. We provide legal expertise and we provide a legal analysis to them. And then they make decisions on the behalf of Yakima County in their respective roles individually and collectively as county commissioners. And that's a very important distinction because I'm not in front of a judge advocating a particular position tonight. I'm indicating our legal advice to you that we gave to our county commissioners. And in that respect, when James, you say that we need to basically go through point by point as you did back on the, the, the 27th of January, it's, it's a little disconcerting because we're not here to determine what is right. That is up to the county commissioners to determine whether it's being done tonight or at another time in another meeting or possibly in court. That's not, it's not gonna be resolved tonight, okay? I merely wanna state essentially our perspective as to how we came to this point, believing that the, the, the decision to amend 6.04 back in January, January 5th, um, how it has the ability to be argued that it is a correct legal interpretation. And I also want to make it clear, whether you agree or disagree is, is not the point from my perspective as county prosecutor. You can certainly disagree with our legal analysis. People do all the time, both with myself and other prosecutors here in the Yakima County Prosecutor's Office. That's absolutely right. And I respect your opinion uh, and I embrace it. Um, confrontation is one of the bedrock foundational layers of any lawyer. Um, with that being said, however, let's talk very briefly about the 27th and the points that James came up with. He came up um, on behalf of the Board of Health with seven points. And I think ultimately I want to I, I want to talk globally as to why we believe that the county commissioners have the legal authority or the legal ability to argue this position and that the actions that they have taken, namely on January 5th of 2021, are actually available to them. Whether they make this choice then or whether they maintain these choices now is up to them as a legislative body of Yakima County. It's not up to myself or Don Anderson as we sit here as the legal advisors to the Yakima County Board of Commissioners. Now, back on the 27th, um, there was a, uh, fairly long meeting. And I, what I decided to do after speaking with Mr. Elliott, whom I respect as a lawyer and as a, a, a 
a colleague, a fellow legal colleague, uh, and as a friend. Um, essentially, what I did is I authorized to get a transcript of the meat and potatoes of Mr. Elliott and what he stated back then. And I believe that he has a copy of this as well and what he stated. Um, and I have gone through it, obviously, as has Mr. Anderson. Um, and one of the things that that kind of uh, kind of allowed us to evaluate what we were doing is the sense of the statutory authority that Mr. Elliott was relying upon. And and I would say that it is partly the statutory reliance that we shared with you tonight. 70.05030 is what he relied on and essentially believed that that is what in, in fact emboldened the county commissioners to make the decisions that they did in amending the statute under ordinance 1-2021. Um, but it goes further than that under the law. The other statutory reference that I wanna make clear to everybody is RCW 70.46031, which is districts of one county health board and membership. In 70.05, you essentially have the evaluation of the health board and it has specific information about the health board and its membership. 70.46031 talks about the health board and membership as well in conjunction with and in reliance upon 70.05. And I'll read it to you as Mr. Elliott read 70.05 back on the 27th of January. A health district to consist of one county may be created whenever the county legislative authority of the county shall pass a resolution or ordinance to organize such a health district under chapter 70.05 RCW and this chapter. So once again, they're they, they work in conjunction. So you have 70.05 and 70.46, they work in conjunction with one another. Next paragraph, the resolution or ordinance may specify the membership, representation on the district health board, comma, or other matters relative to the formation or operation of the health district. The county legislative authority may appoint elected officials from cities and towns and persons other than elected officials as members of the health district board, so long as persons other than elected officials do not constitute a majority. Next paragraph, any single county health district existing on the effective date of this act shall continue in existence unless and until changed by affirmative action of the county legislative authority. So essentially the, the 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 essence here is back on the 27th, Mr. Elliott, in part correctly, identified 70.05, which he believed limited the powers and authority of the, the Yakima County Board of Commissioners. I want to expand that authority to involve a statute that incorporates 70.05, um, and that is 70.46031. And as I read the language, and I'll read it again, the resolution ordinance may specify the membership, the representation on the district health board, or other matters relative to the formation or operation of the health district. So instead of saying that the powers that were given to the Board of County Commissioners are very, very uh, narrow uh, under potentially the interpretation under 7005, uh, I believe that 70.46 is expansive in nature. It gives uh, the ability for the Yakima County Board of County Commissioners, the ability to do arguably what they proposed to do and did do on January 5th of 2021. Uh, and it's really important to understand that there is that distinction that allows, once again, when you look at the first two points that Mr. Elliott made in re regards to the, the weight of the, the Board of Health's members vote, as well as the, the, the second under 1B that a member of the Board of County Commissioners shall be elected chair of the Board of Health, Mr. Elliott indicated in his argument in his presentation on the 27th that those were arguably the two most important issues that are facing the Board of Health currently. And under that, under 70.46.031, essentially you get to the point where the board and the board of county commissioners is what I'm referring to, essentially arguably can make that decision and can engage in those two simply by looking at the language that I specified earlier. The resolution or ordinance, in this particular case, ordinance 1-2021 may specify the membership representation on the district health board or other matters relative to the formation or operation of the health district. It's generalized language. 
Uh, points three through five that Mr. Elliott brought up, essentially he indicated arguably that under 70.05, they arguably had the statute, statutory authority to deal with those. Um, and and it was, it was, it's clear that under both of those statutes, especially under once again, the same argument or the same presentation under 70.46, they have the ability to do that under that generalized language. And then the last two that he brought up was the, the appointment of the, uh, the individual's appointment process for local health officer and executive director. And once again, language under 70.46, 0.031, I believe, uh, allows them to at least proceed under Washington law with the ability to do what they did. Now, one of the issues that is always evaluated uh, in front of the court is statutory interpretation, not just for lawyers, but obviously for judges. And obviously, an often a very important point of as a lawyer looking at legislative intent and looking at what the statutory construction is. And sometimes you have statutes that compete with one another and that they, they oppose each other. And so then the court, through the advocacy of the respective sides, then makes arguments that determine what is the statutory interpretation, what is the legislative intent. And as long as it's not repugnant to one another, we can assume that they intended for all the words in the, the, the actual written words that are put forth in the statutes created by the legislature, and in this case, clearly under revised code of Washington state law, that it all matters. They want, basically the courts will interpret statutory language and try to make all the words matter. They will try to do the right thing by evaluating what is being done in the respective competing statutes. In, in this particular occasion, uh, I believe that the, the, the board of, of county commissioners can look at both of these statutes and they can determine that they both work together in conjunction with one another. You have to read them together. And I believe that's the way it's set up. And they both, in both statutes, reference the other. So we know that they're valid statutes. And we also know that they take into account referencing each other, that you look at both of these to, to essentially determine the Board of Health and, and the representation and the matters that we're talking about. And because of that, I think it's a very plausible it's, it's a legal position that the Board of County Commissioners has taken to say that they, they arguably have the authority to do what they've done. Whether you like it or not is a whole other issue. That's secondary to this presentation tonight. I'm not arguing for their position. I'm stating that they have the ability to make a decision as the Yakima County Board of Commissioners to determine as they have back in the first part of January to make amendments to 6.04 Yakima code 6.04 and by the ordinance create those membership evaluations to create those words and those sections that define the membership and and how it's relating to the board of health and for those reasons it would be my position as Yakima County prosecutor to say that once again whether you like it or not is not the issue but it would be my professional legal opinion to the legislative authority, which I am entrusted to engage and legally advise that they have the ability to do what they have done to create an ordinance that amends 6.04. And then subsequent to this, if through resolution, they pass that and incorporate and, and the language is consistent, they had the ability to move forward with what they have chosen to do at least to this day. Whether they do that moving forward, whether they maintain their position moving forward is up to those three elected officials who make up your Yakima County Board of Commissioners. So there, there is essentially my, my short-term analysis. There is essentially, uh, and, and certainly Don Anderson and I have worked very, uh, very, uh, hard on, on looking at all these measures from the get-go, from the beginning, when these issues were raised last late fall. And, uh, and, and we believe that they have the ability to make a legal argument um, that they could do what they did. Thank you. Well, Joe, I appreciate that. And I wasn't trying to narrow you down in terms of just covering the seven points. I knew that you had ordered a transcript, so I assumed you were going to walk through them. My goal was essentially, as you presented a point, was more what I meant, to allow the opportunity to respond. And I, 
I appreciate uh, what you have shared with us. My understanding from the January 27th meeting, as we discussed it, was that the county commissioners were in agreement that 7005-030 was the basis of the authority. It was brought up during that meeting, it was discussed. And even more than that, I've had a chance to go back and, and look at a couple different three areas to make sure that that's what their position originally was. You have now raised a new statute, 704631, that has not been raised before, and I'm happy to address it tonight, and I will. Well, let me, if I may, James, let me interrupt. I, you know, once again, this is not in front of court. You and I are not arguing for our respective positions, or at least I'm not. I'm presenting a legal argument. But 70.05 references 70.46031. Um, it, it references the statute, and you have to read statutes together. And that's what, that's what I have done. That's what yeah, and, that, and that's exactly so it's what not I mean. a new statute. It's not a new statute. It's, no, no, it's, I it's apologize. Existing law and, it, and they made a decision. Now, in reading the transcript, there was no, in the transcript that I have and that I ordered up and that you have received a copy of, uh, it, it, it doesn't indicate anywhere in there that they agreed that it was only under 70.05. And furthermore, I was not at that meeting on the 27th of January, and I know Mr. Anderson was not either. So they didn't have the benefit of any kind of legal representation at that time, which is fine. They certainly can, can move forward, but it not, it's not to my knowledge that they agreed to limit themselves only to 70.05. And as their legal counsel, as their legal advisor, um, that would never be the case. Um, any client of mine would never uh, agree that they would only consider one statute and, and, and not pay attention to other statutes that I, as, as an attorney, as you and a, as an attorney, would advise are applicable under the circumstances. So we, we have to read the law all together to make an informed decision. And I was not intending to state that 7046.031 is a new statute. What I'm saying is this being a new theory for their basis of authority. So if you'll let me finish, we'll walk through it. And I'm happy to address 7046.031. And I agree with you that you need to read the statutes together. But what I was stating was that the county commissioner's position, and I'm going to refer to three different things here in order to show or at least identify for the Board of Health, because that's the group that's hearing this issue that's being discussed. The county commissioners first in their resolution, which was dated December 15th, 2020, that is resolution 376-2020 which identified that there was gonna be a public hearing for consideration on this new ordinance. In that resolution, the language that they quote is the exact language from 7005030. So that's first. Second, when the Board of County Commissioners ordinance, which created this new county code, which is ordinance number 1-2021, was done on January 5th, 2021, it again quoted the exact language from 7005-030. Both the ordinance and the resolution showed as the exact language that which is found in 7005-030, not the language that you have quoted about other matters, et cetera, et cetera. And third, in prior resolutions that have been done as a result of actions between the county commissioners and the Board of Health, such as in 2018. In 2018, there was a resolution that was done and a coordinated ordinance through Yakima County that identified that pursuant to 7005030, the ability for the county commissioners to provide for provisions related to the local health board. So we have these three prior pieces of information that identified that this power and authority to do what was being done was found in 7005030. So as then it related to our meeting on January 27th, there weren't any issues about 746031, but I'm happy to address them now. And I actually hope that people read this ordinance or this RCW, because as you were reading it, the key thing that came out from this is the language it says, a health district may be created by resolution. 
I think in our last board meeting, Dr. Cleary pointed out this health district has been around for over 100 years. This ordinance is not creating a new health district. The health district has always existed for the last 100 years. The idea that a resolution is used to create a health district, that's the point of 7046030 as I read it now. And in fact, it says the opportunity to organize a health district then under 70.05, where you're reading statutes together, the creation of a health district then would be guided by the specific statute of 70.05 which is consistent with how the commissioners have done what they've done, how prior actions have been taken. Now, you use the language that a resolution or ordinance can be done related to quote unquote other matters. It's important that if you actually read RCW 7046031, the one you're relying upon, that is the original ordinance or resolution used to create a health district. The language of that statute essentially says, if you are going to create a health district and it's going to be effective under 7005, you need to use an ordinance, you need to use a resolution. And the resolution, which is the language of 746031, what resolution or ordinance is it talking about? It's talking about the resolution or ordinance that creates a health district that resolution or ordinance may specify certain things. So I, I, this is an interesting argument, but Joe, I will disagree with you and board members. I encourage you to read 746031 and the public to do the same. Thank you, James. I, uh, I, I respect your opinion as I always state to you and uh, I, I certainly disagree with your reading of that. I don't read it the same way. Um, and, and once again, this is exactly what I meant when I talked in terms of we're not in front of the judge. We're not in court right now. Uh, we have a different statutory interpretation and we have a different reading of it. And that's what lawyers do. Um, whether the commissioners want to agree or disagree with our respective position in terms of that legal advice or whether they agree with your, your particular position, that is absolutely you know, we're, what we're doing here tonight. My role tonight is to express to you and to everyone else that is on this call that that is our position in legal advising them that they have the ability to move forward on this. Whether you disagree or not is is really, you know, that's the essence of what maybe can come in the, the future. Um, but they're not limited by 70.05 and only that statute. Um, and I disagree with the fact that 70.46 uh, is only for the creation of a health district. Uh, I don't read it the same way you do. And um, I respect your opinion, uh, but we do disagree. Thank you. Mr. Elliott, do you have any further comment you wanna make? No, I, again, I just say people read 7046031 and I mean, I guess to the extent that any of the board members have any questions related to this, this might be a good time to do that, Commissioner. Is there anyone on the board who has a question for Mr. Elliott or Mr. Bruzic? Well, I, Commissioner Anderson, Andre Fresco here. I'd like to make a point of clarification. I believe that oh, okay. Mr. Brusick mentioned the idea of having legal representation at our board meeting or that people have the opportunity for that. Um, I don't think that's a normal course of business. I don't think that was the intent, but I wanted to make sure that we clarified that I don't think that board members coming to the Board of Health need legal representation when they when they attend a board meeting. Okay. If I can, this is uh, Dr. Cleary, I have a question. Go ahead, um, doctor. Uh, Mr. Brusick, um, how do you then interpret um, in that 70.46.031 um, the term may be created? Do you, do you somehow feel that there's an ambiguity there? No, the health district here in Yakima County was created a long time ago, as you heard in the meeting in January 27th. A health district to consist of one county may be created. Well, in this case, it's not just a may created, this was created a long time ago in Yakima County. 
um, whenever the county legislative authority of the county shall pass a resolution or ordinance. That's the creation. And then we know that the resolution or ordinance may specify, it doesn't state in terms of at the time that it's created, that they may state this membership representation of the district health board or other matters. Um, it's, it, it, it doesn't read that way to me. And once again, 70.05 references directly 70.46. Because of that, you read them in conjunction with one another. And so I would say that the, the evaluation of both of those statutes can lead a trier of fact, namely a judge, to potentially consider the Yakima County Board of Commissioners to be correct, possibly in their evaluation and analysis and what they had did back in January in regards to the amendment to 6.04. So you interpret the last sentence of the first paragraph stating a resolution or ordinance to be followed by the next sentence, the resolution or ordinance to be two separate entities. I read it for exactly as I've described. I can't be any more. No, I, that's, that's not what I was asking. Are you saying that the second paragraph is now referring to a new resolution or ordinance, not the original one? No, I'm, I'm reading it commonsensically, sir, from my point of view. A health district to consist of one county may be created whenever the county legislative authority of the county shall pass a resolution or ordinance to organize such a health district under chapter 70.05 and this chapter, very important part of that first sentence. Then the next paragraph, the resolution or ordinance may specify, not at the time of creation, but throughout the existence. That's the way I interpret it. Whether I'm right or wrong is for you to decide. So are you saying that there is a resolution or ordinance dating back to the origin of the health district that is providing these powers? I'm saying that my interpretation of that statute, sir, is that it could be read in conjunction with 70.05. And through that language, it could be interpreted that at the creation of and throughout, it may deal with those things and specify the membership representation of the district health board or other matters relative to the formation or operation of the health district. So do you have that resolution? You say it may, do you have it in hand? What's the date of that resolution? That originally created the health district? Correct, you're claiming it has these powers. Do you have it? Well, no, I don't have it because it states here and this is the current statutory reference under 7046 that helps define the health board and its membership. It doesn't limit it, it states districts of one county, which we are, the health board and the membership. and it helps defined in conjunction with 70.05. And because of that, you read them together and then you take them both together, which a judge would do to evaluate whether they have the authority to do what they've done. Once again, we can argue all night long and I'm not gonna attempt to try to change your opinion, doctor. And, and certainly I've come to a legal conclusion and I've advised the Yakima County Board of Commissioners that they have the legal authority to possibly do what they're doing whether it's good or bad is for others other than myself to determine. Joe, uh, I, I feel like there's a problem with um, the way people have been reading 70.46 anyway, 70.46.034. And everything that you've said uh, up to this point is correct, but everybody wants to leave out the last sentence of that of that uh, uh, statute, which says any single county health district existing on the effective date of this act shall continue in existence unless and until changed by affirmative action of the county legislative authority. And that I believe needs to be considered when speaking to the authority of the board of county commissioners to do what they did. Any, any further comment? Well, I'll, I'll comment on that last comment. Um, subsequently, the powers of the county commissioners reside in uh, 70.05.030 to make any additional changes. And that's where we get back to where we are, where, well, you're shaking your head, but do you have any rationale for saying that there are additional powers 
after the creation. Absolutely. Mr. Mr. Brusek has stated this uh, several times in his presentation that you read statutes together. And so when you read 70.05.030, it specifically references RCW 70.46. And when you read RCW 70.46, it specifically references 70.05. Uh, and so um, the statutes have to be read together. You can't read one without the other. And, um, and that's essentially what Mr. Brusick stated in terms of analysis and interpretation of what you do when you've got two statutes that overlap each other and arguably both uh, have effect as you, you read them so as to not, uh, not eliminate the language from either one. You want all the language to be effective of both statutes. And that's a, that's a black letter law uh, uh, approach to interpretation of, of, uh, of statutes. Mr. Anderson, um, can you tell me who wrote this ordinance and what your role was in its uh, writing? Um, I assisted the board in writing the, the ordinance at their direction. And can you tell me what led to this ordinance and what the intent is? I don't, I don't base my ordinances by how something was led or how, what the intent was. And uh, as Mr. Brusick indicated, uh, we don't see that as our function here today. Our function here today is to explain where the County Board of Commissioners came, has the authority to uh, make the changes to uh, chapter 6.04 of the County Code or uh, other, put otherwise ordinance 1-2021. And so uh, I'm not here to have a colloquy with anyone. I'm not here to debate with anyone. And I'm certainly, it's not a courtroom and I don't intend it to be in a courtroom uh, where there's argument or, uh, or uh, headbutting or uh, anything of the like. Um, as I said, this was meant to present to you, we don't represent the Board of Health. We represent the county commissioners and uh, Mr. Brusick did a fine job of explaining to you uh, how, the, how the Board of County Commissioners, what supports their action in adopting uh, the changes to the ordinance. And so I'll leave it at that. Well, I, I, I'll have to point out that Mr. Brusick um, said that he you know, represents us. He's, they said, I serve you. Um, and he's the legal advisor of the legislative authority. So I think there would be some concern about liability in laws that are written. And if you don't understand the intent, do you understand the implementation? Do you understand the consequences? And I would say that those are pretty crucial things to be thinking about the liabilities and the legality of this. Well, let me, uh, Dr. Let me, uh... First of all, when I said that I serve you, I serve everybody in Yakima County, regardless of who they are and what their status is. Uh, as an elected official, as do your county commissioners. Uh, they represent the people of Yakima County collectively, namely in three different districts, but collectively as a whole, Yakima County. And they make legislative decisions on behalf of every person, regardless of their status in Yakima County. So when I say that, I say that to everybody all the time. I'm a, I'm a public servant. I serve everyone. We legally advise the county commission, and Mr. Anderson is correct in our role with them versus the board of health. But that doesn't that doesn't it doesn't end the issue there. We, as as the chief legal advisor of the, the county commissioners, and as county prosecutor, one of uh, one of the most important parts of our office is not just the criminal end where people hear about all the criminal cases that we prosecute. Um, but we also deal with all the civil and the legal and the liability issues. And so um, it's extremely important to me as county prosecutor um, that we make decisions as great stewards of taxpayer money. And so when we make decisions, that is constantly the top of my mind. And I can tell you that it's the top of my mind because um, I spent 13 years filing lawsuits, suing people and entities, both nationally and locally in regards to liability issues. So I'm supremely aware of where, where those statements range. Um, it, it's very important to me. And so when we look at 
our advice to the county commissioners or to any other elected official. Uh, you know, we, as county prosecutor, I advise the county treasurer, uh, the, the, the county auditor, the county assessor, uh, the department heads of the, all the various county departments. And we collectively, as a, as a county department ourselves, the prosecutor's office, are always supremely aware of the legal advice we give and, and how the consequences flow from that and options. But we're no different than Mr. Elliott or any other lawyer or Judge Federspiel, who wrote a very eloquent uh, uh, statement to, the, to this meeting at the very beginning. Um, we, we advise, we, we give our input, we give our interpretation. Whether we're right or wrong is oftentimes left up to someone else to decide, whether it be a judge or a jury or an administrative law judge or someone else who's put in the position of authority. So all of those things that you mentioned are clearly apparent. We look at those aspects when we advise, say, the Board of County Commissioners, and we look at all of those aspects to try to advise them as to what their options are. But it's option-based advisement. It's not, I, we as, as the legal advisors, and I as Yakima County Prosecutor, don't tell them what to do. That's not my role. Um, I, I provide options, just like I did in my private practice, and then the client makes the decisions as to how to proceed. And under the rules of professional ethics and conduct that govern every lawyer here in the state of Washington, we make sure that we, we stay very clearly within those ethical guidelines in terms of that advice. So I don't know if that answers your question, but, but you raised some very important points and I wanted to make sure that it was clear as to my response. Well, I, I think this ordinance does uh, pose some liabilities for the Board of Health and um, potentially for the county and the commissioners as well. Uh, I really don't think we've explored any of the aspects um, of this ordinance in terms of how it may interrupt services, affect the funding of the health district, uh, or affect the populations we serve. And um, I, I think if you just want to go down to, to one uh, aspect of this ordinance uh, and look at paragraph six, page two of Appendix A, um, that paragraph, in my mind, contains the primary goals of this ordinance and the greatest dangers to the community and the greatest liabilities for uh, the county government. Because if we accept um, some of the earlier components that the Board of County Commissioners can create committees like the nominating committee without board approval, have majority voting rights, and assign the functions of the committee. They can essentially create committees of just commissioners and perform virtually all the functions of the Board of the Health without holding public meetings, without the input of the rest of the board, and without public input. And that paragraph is not borrowed from elsewhere. It was crafted for a definite purpose and was obviously meant to be used. If the Board of Health were to accept this, as you suggest, the Board of Health could immediately be restructured by both the Board of Health and the Yakima Health, Health District could be, to be run by committees of commissioners. A COVID-19 response committee could oversee all aspects and control all funding of the pandemic response. The restriction to laws contained in that paragraph would then prohibit following dozens of laws, proclamations, and emergency directives currently being relied upon by the, the um, health district, and the committee could immediately defund all services the Board of County Commissioners disagree with. It mentions laws, which are ones under which services provided by the health district are supposed to be funded by the county, but it leaves out many others. There's no mechanism for implementing the option of obtaining the county commissioner's permission, but presumably amendments and, and new resolutions to fix this would entail a ridiculous delay. And amongst the laws that are not being allowed by that paragraph, you'll see that it contains 70.2, which barely applies, but it omits the rest of chapter 70 laws, which like 70.2 are not specifically identified as public health laws, but include numerous aspects of the health district activities pertaining to other infectious diseases, 
including all of our work on TB, our STD clinics and, and information services, the influenza plan, the rural health plan, 70.290, providing access to for routine childhood disease vaccines to low-income children, 70.15, or Emergency Volunteer Practitioners Act during emergency proclamations, 70.22.24.28, all of our management of hazardous materials, pesticide health hazards, smoking in public, all of the things the health district does. It doesn't even mention 70A, which is the environmental health, food safety, water safety, 71A, which is mental health and services for the disabled. But the real kicker and the real point of that paragraph is it blocks chapter 38. 38.52, emergency management, all of the components of that, 38.52.030, the comprehensive emergency management plan that is coordinating our interagency COVID response plan, all the cooperative efforts that are being done between the health district, the EOC, the hospitals, the clinics, the pharmacies, the testing and vaccination sites, all the coordinated services supporting the schools, businesses, through training, education, provision of PPE, and services protect the essential workers could be immediately shut down. And most importantly of all, and if you read the, the information and the wording in the HP 1152, it adds a special sentence that this one doesn't have. It mentions following the emergency proclamations of the governor. And the components in this chapter say you have to abide by state law, state public health law, uh, rulings of the Department of Health, but it purposely leaves out the emergency proclamations. And those proclamations include dozens and dozens of temporary changes in the RCWs aimed at coordinating the state and local office of emergency management and health departments via the comprehensive emergency management plan, the safety measures for long-term care, it, the suspension of regulatory obligations to increase the number of long-term care workers, it suspends a number of license renewals, inspections, taxes, credentialing to help healthcare facilities and businesses. Uh, 20.32 pro proclamation has specific modifications of numerous regulations regarding license renewals and reactivations of retired medical professionals, including EMTs, paramedics, nurses, pharmacists, respiratory therapists, and physicists, physicians like me who spent the day as a retired physician giving vaccines in Wapato. And all of this reworking of these regulations includes reworking the vaccine regulations to increase access, regulations to protect the safety of essential workers in warehouses, agriculture, grocery stores, and numerous other businesses. The most obvious inter interruption of services from this paragraph would include our comprehensive emergency management plan, coordinating the services of the Office of Emergency Management and the Yakima Health District, this would immediately disrupt the COVID-19 testing site at the fairgrounds, interfere with the vaccine clinic coordination by the health district and the vaccination site, a mass vaccination site planning to open up on 317. It would affect all the healthcare workers and first responders like retired physician, Nikki Bocek and her husband, retired PA Wayne Hansen, uh, who I've worked with in this past week giving vaccinations and again today Wayne signs up every day as a volunteer, uh, every time there's a volunteer opportunity, and all of us are providing those services as volunteers under allowances provided by the revised RCWs in the governor's proclamations. The emergency order is needed to spend the restricted federal funding that Mr. Fresco and the Yakima Health District have put so much effort into acquiring for the COVID-related services. The RCW states that funding of the health district is the responsibility of the county, but the funding for the Yakima Health District ranks last or next to last among all the Washington health districts every year. If you look at last month's meeting minutes, you'll see that the county commissioners gave 163,000 out of the health district's $7.8 million budget. So that's 2%. That's like leaving a waitress a penny just to be insulting. Amongst the many reasons the county commissioner should not be given more say over the Board of Health, that's a strong one. So the, the block, the use, the, this could block the use of the COVID response funds 
tied to the disease investigation team, our contact tracing, our outbreak response team, our care coordination team, community-based testing and support, vaccine distribution, the environmental health team that's providing education to businesses regarding working worker safety, and the phase reopening and support to help reopen those restaurants and businesses safely. So at a time when most of us are seeing a light at the end of the tunnel, case counts are dropping, we're advancing in our phases, businesses and schools are reopening, vaccinations are happening, and those who have been so badly hurt by this past year just getting back on their feet, this ordinance threatens to cut the legs out from under them by shutting down all the measures that have been working and giving us hope. It risks new outbreaks and peaks in cases, which will make all of last year's sacrifices not. It is obvious to anyone who's read the quotes by the county commissioners in the Herald, read their inflammatory rhetoric towards the governor and the emergency proclamations, and read their own proclamations that the goal of the county commissioners is to defy the emergency proclamations as a rebuke of Governor Inslee, regardless of how it harms the citizens and the businesses in Yakima County. The two new commissioners have been on the Board of Health for four months and have failed to reveal any programs that they say this ordinance will allow. If they actually had sound policies or helpful ideas acceptable to the public and the Board of Health, they should have brought them forth already. As I stated at the last meeting, if they had a reasonable and intelligent proposal, we could move forward without the ordinance. Instead, they've given no constructive input and will not reveal their plan until it can be implemented in the manner of this ordinance was created, which is without the knowledge, without the involvement or consent of either the other members of the Board of Health, the staff or management of the Health District, or the public. With the exception of including our respected coroner in, these, in our meetings, this ordinance is all about a political power grab that deprives the rest of the board and the Yakima citizens of equal representation, input, and voting rights, and it contains absolutely nothing about the health and safety of the community. So disrupting safe reopening of schools and businesses, interfering with the crucial allowances of the healthcare workers and emergency responders, defunding and de-staffing our testing and vaccination sites, blocking our support for businesses and essential workers, and provoking another spike in cases, this ordinance will put Yakima back on the COVID outbreak map and in the national news. That will do irreparable harm to all the businesses so dependent upon spring and summer tourism, our hotels, our breweries, wineries, restaurants, and just as we're hoping for an influx of seasonal workers, a spike in illnesses, a return to phase one, a loss of the safeguards of Proclamation 20-57 for the agricultural migrant and essential workers in Yakima, alone, we'll be the only county doing this, as opposed to other counties, that will certainly lead to tourists and workers going elsewhere. That will lead to a loss of income for the stores, the small businesses that have been struggling, and be a severe blow to agribusiness. And knowing that House Bill 1152, which will block this type of restructuring and altering the composition of Board of Health without state approval, is just about to go through, I will again add to all those liabilities that there's a, an additional liability for forcing this down our throats right before the law is about to change. So, Mr. Brusick, I, I cannot imagine how you can not be aware of liabilities in a time bomb like this. Well, as indicated, I appreciate everything you said and respect your opinion. I'm sure the, the three county commissioners who are part of this call and listening uh, intently to what you said, Doctor, um, have listened clearly to what you say, and, and obviously your very clear message. Um, I just want to correct one thing. You say that I suggest that this ordinance should move forward. I that's not that's not accurate. I don't suggest that they should do something. This is once again their decision. But I provided merely legal advice, as did Don Anderson, that allows them to be able to make decisions such as the one that they have made or will continue to make. Short of that, that's why we have great people like you in our community that are going to reference those things you just did very clearly, provide a very insightful opinion and, and really show the passion and love you have for this community to do the right thing. 
Um, and I respect that very much because I think all of us on this call feel exactly the same way. We want to move forward. Uh, I, I know the commissioners want to do that and, and do what's in the best interests of, of Yakima County. Um, but once again, I respect your opinion. I, I leave it at that. Uh, you've, you've made your opinion very clear and I, I, I hear you. Thank you. Well, I do have one additional question then. Um, what are the consequences of the board declining to accept any or all of this ordinance? Well, once again, it would be up to a court possibly if it gets to that point to determine the, their, their ability to make this decision and to pass this ordinance uh, and then to follow it up with resolution to be consistent with the ordinance that would give them that authority as described in the ordinance. Um, and if a court feels that they are outside their power and authority pursuant to the statutes we've been talking about, then obviously the court could stop them from, from uh, having that authority. And, and how would this get to court? Well, I can't, I'm not going to give you legal advice, sir. I, I'm not under the, the structure of that. You can talk with an attorney. You can talk with Mr. Elliott if he feels that it's appropriate to advise you. Um, and, well, uh, Mr. Busick, I, I'll just interrupt you there. Haven't you stated that you could sue the Board of Health or something else? No, I didn't state that at all. No, I didn't. I didn't state that at all. That's not. That's not my position at all. That's not why we're here. That's. That's. That's not. And can you clarify? Could you do that? I'm not going to sue anybody based upon the conversation tonight. I don't know where you got that. And I've never said that before. That's not my intention. Um, I, once again, my purpose of being here is to let you know that as the county legislative authority legal advisor, um, it would be my professional opinion. Once again, I want to reiterate what I said at the very beginning for exactly this reason. Whether you agree with my advice to our legislative authority, the Board of County Commissioners, is not the issue here. You clearly disagree. I, I respect that, sir, very much. But it would be my professional advice that they have the ability to move forward and, and, and do what they've done, arguably, under color of right, to be able to argue to an entity, such as a trier of fact, that they're correct in doing what they did. Whether they win or lose, or whether it goes to litigation, whether it doesn't do anything, maybe... Maybe after what you've just said, they make a decision to change their mind or to do something different. I don't know, but that's why we're here. But my position and what my job is to them is to provide that information to them in terms of their legal options. And they've chosen as of January 5th to pursue a legal option. Whether it's right or wrong is for someone else to determine, sir. Okay, so um, what I would like to say is that, you know, we spent um, on January 27th, almost two and a half hours talking about the proposed resolution and the ordinance that the commissioners adopted. And, you know, hearing about RCW 70.46.031 for the first time tonight, was um, kind of took me back and um, and I don't know why I'm just hearing about this. I do know that it was referenced in RCW 70.05030, but it's the first time that they have taken the stance on saying that that, is, that was their legal and um, that was their legal framework of why they did that. Now, I do wanna point out some things that I saw on the ordinance number 1-2021. Uh, I think it's one, two, three, four. It's on the fourth paragraph where they say, whereas given the increasing complex public health issues facing Yakima County, including but not limited to the COVID-19 pandemic and the county's commitment to find solutions and to improve the overall, overall health of the community. That was one of their points. And the second point was, whereas the Yakima County Board of Commissioners desires to increase its engagement with the Board of Health in order to evaluate and develop 
public health policies and strategies to support a healthy community. Now, I would argue that um, adopting all of this ordinance and everything in Exhibit A actually does not uh, improve or find solution. It actually brings up all the legal concerns that Dr. Cleary has stated. And it does not, um, I don't think it improves the health of the community because if you listen to all of the public comment that we have been receiving, the 16 today, and the, all the public comment that we, we have received in our, at our last meeting, they cite a lot of concerns that our county commissioners do not have the, the community's health um, as a priority. So those are just some points that I, that I wanted to make. And also they want to increase engagement. It was another one that's engagement was a, was a word that I found interesting because I don't think the correct word was engagement to increase its engagement, but to increase its power on the board of health, I think was the correct word that they were probably should have used. Um, but maybe someone can speak to that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Commissioner Anderson, if I may, I was going to ask uh, Mr. Elliott if there was more on the legal front in terms of this particular discussion. Sure, proceed. There's, there's probably quite a few things to cover here, and I don't know whether um, Mr. Brusick and Mr. Anderson's intention was to present what they have thus far and then allow this board as a board of health to continue our discussion related to this resolution. Um, I guess if there are further questions for either Joe or Don, I guess we can deal with those. But to the extent that their presentation that they were intending to give on behalf of the commissioners is done, I guess one option is they can get off this. The Board of Health can actually conduct its meeting like a normal Board of Health would, and we can discuss these issues that are here. So I don't know, Joe and Don, are you guys done with your presentation? Uh, James, yes, we are. And, and we would, uh, you know, first of all, I, I really appreciate everybody listening. Uh, you know, it's, it's disconcerting that this is contentious because, you know, once again, I, I as well as most every one of you, every one of you would rather be working together for a, a collective whole. And I'm, I'm sorry that we're in this situation. Um, however, I do agree with you, James. I think we have finished our presentation. Um, and uh, Don and I certainly can get off and let you carry on with your business. Thank you. I think that'd be appropriate. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate everybody uh, listening to our position and uh, take care. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Anderson, uh, rather Commissioner Anderson, if I may, uh, what we had down as board business was uh, to discuss the Board of Health draft resolution, uh, not just the ordinance, but actually the resolution before the board in terms of the considerations of what the Board of County Commissioners have done with a new ordinance. I wonder if that's something you could continue, please. I think that would be appropriate. Uh, I know that there were many discussion points at our last meeting, and I know that uh, board members have questions. So if, if it's agreeable with you, Commissioner, I'd like to just ask if the board has thoughts to share or concerns that uh, either the staff or uh, Mr. Elliott is our um, attorney's record to answer. Would any, <clears throat> excuse me, would any of the board members have questions or comments that they would like to present? Uh, this is Dr. Cleary. Well, my first comment is that as I continue to look at the ordinance, um, every time I look at it, I, I find an additional bit of information that's not evident, um, I, I, additional concerns about its impact upon uh, the staff, upon the, the functions of the health district, uh, upon the community, and potential liabilities. And so I, I do respect uh, Mr. Elliott's uh, interpretation. I uh, appreciate uh, that he created the resolution, although I don't remember the board ever 
asking him to do that. So I'm not sure how that was uh, done. That I, I think a resolution should be a board decision. Um, but I am not in favor of acting on a resolution for an ordinance that we have not defined, that we have not done our homework on, and that poses serious liabilities. So I would say that we should, you know, I don't, I don't know if we're doing any action. If we're doing action, I would make a motion to table the ordinance uh, and the resolution. Well, it was my understanding and my, my view, uh, doctor, that uh, this evening was going to be a discussion and some vetting of uh, all of the issues and of the points and to allow the full board members to uh, express their uh, concerns or make their comments. So I wasn't anticipating any action tonight. Okay, then I think I've uh, made my opinions obvious. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Cleary. I wonder uh, for everyone's uh, awareness, uh, Mr. Elliott, Dr. Cleary, to ask about how you had come to the conclusion of coming up with a potential resolution. Could you explain that process? Well, I and Commissioner McKinney, we addressed this at the beginning of the January 27th meeting, and she can correct me if I'm wrong, but it was the two days before the January 27th meeting. I was on a call with Commissioner McKinney and Mr. Ibach, where in that discussion, there was talk about how to prepare a resolution, what to do. And as a result of that, uh, I was asked to then put together a draft resolution looking at my analysis of the ordinance and what authority the commissioners had in an effort to prepare a draft resolution for that January 27th meeting. So Commissioner McKinney, please correct me if I'm incorrect in that. You are correct. We did work together, Mr. Elliott, on there. And I think it's an appropriate time to address uh, the lengthy statement made by Dr. Cleary, uh, because I think it warrants an address. Um, first, I would say, why are we here? And we're here because the previous board acted inappropriately. The previous board did not follow the guidelines, their, their resolution, to make sure that health board members uh, were, if seats were being vacated, that those seats were advertised to the public so that the public had the opportunity to, uh, and our municipal representatives had the opportunity to apply for those new positions. The previous chair, is someone who is well-versed uh, in running boards. And it still occurred. And we still had a situation where the board was ready to reappoint members to the board whose seats were vacating. And I recommended against taking that vote. And in fact, Mr. Elliott, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that I had to ask counsel for the health district to advise the board whether or not that vote was appropriate to take. And Mr. Elliott advised the board at that time it was not appropriate to take that vote. The board then decided that they were going to extend the terms of those three members whose terms were expiring. Those members also were able to vote for themselves to extend their own term. This was done. We ended up having a special board meeting. Well, I should, I digress. I should say that at that same meeting, we were presented, uh, the board was presented with a request by Director Fresco to approve a contract for a new health officer without allowing us to see the contract first. Again, we asked to sign Council Mr. Elliott, was it advisable for the board to take a vote to approve a contract for a new health officer without the benefit of reviewing the contract. Mr. Elliott advised us not to take the vote. It was at that time we were decided, it was decided we should have a special meeting to discuss the contract for Dr. Yuka. When we had that special meeting, we discussed the contract and it was discovered that Dr. Yuka was someone we were not going to be able to continue with on a permanent contract. And he presently serves uh, as a, a part-time employee to fulfill the, the functions that we, we need as a health director, which is why we presently are looking for a permanent or interim health director. But also at the end of that meeting, I made a motion to 
strike the motion that had passed at the previous meeting. And that was the motion where the board members who'd voted for themselves to extend their own terms, which passed, that motion was stricken. And that is how we ended up where we are today. That has to be recognized. The board was not operating in a proper fashion. Now, I can tell you that as a new commissioner, I have seen a lot of appointments and requests for appointments come across my desk for various boards. As county commissioners, we make appointments to boards that seem very innocuous, noxious weed, uh, mosquito, ditches, all sorts of things that you can imagine, EMS boards. It is routine for the county commissioners to make those appointments. They come to our desk and we pass resolutions and ordinances to approve those appointments. The statute that creates the health board begins with the county commissioners. And there are plenty of other counties who have just three health board members. They're county commissioners. There are others who've expanded. They've contracted over time. There are many ways that health districts and health boards that vary across our state function. So I encourage all board members to review the function and the makeup of every single board, health board across the state to familiarize yourself because the way we are operating right now is not controversial. In fact, we have expanded the board or previous boards of commissioners expanded over time to a board of seven. But the root and the core of our health board has been from the beginning, the county commissioners. I also might add, you may look at statutes and bylaws which govern other boards, one of which is the King County Health Board, whereby all three of their commissioner council people have two votes. All three have two votes. So again, I encourage you to do your homework and look around to see how other health boards operate to become familiar with the way things are done in other municipalities. And lastly, I want to address what I feel is an inaccurate painting, alarming and alarmist painting of what the proposed intention is of the Board of County Commissioners by Dr. Cleary. You suppose Dr. Cleary, and I would say assert or accuse that the Board of County Commissioners is wanting to do these changes so that we can in essence, defund the health district. And I cannot stress enough, if you are listening right now, that absolutely is not the case. This pandemic is real. The Board of County Commissioners takes it seriously and we support the efforts of the Yakima Health District. And that must go on the record. And that's all I have to say unless there's questions. Oh, this is Dr. Clary again. Well, I, I do have to correct you, Ms. McKinney. If, if you go back and you read the minutes, of that 12-2 meeting, um, there was never a motion to vote on to extend or to reappoint uh, those members. There was one to extend it for one month to allow for replacement for following the correct process. And I, I have to mention to you that uh, one of your associates, one of your commissioners has stated uh, with regard to this ordinance that it did not start 12-2. Um, that commissioner stated that you know, with regard to you and the ordinance, she was already working on the ordinance even before she was sworn in. And it does seem like you'd receive counsel from uh, your attorneys at that meeting because you came to the meeting with the impression that the commissioners were the ones that appoint members. So I would contend that you have probably were working on this ordinance for at least a month before that meeting. So it could not have been anything to do with the events of that meeting, which frankly were a surprise to you because you were, think, you were not aware of the ordinance from 2018 and that resolution. No, you're right, Dr. Cleary. The reason why I was, uh, and I thank you for, for assuming that I had the advice of counsel. I was actually self-prepared. So I thank you for that compliment. Well, that was your, your statement at the meeting, if you read the minutes. So uh, Dr. Cleary, uh, self-prepared, 
thank you, from reading the statutes, which is why I assumed incorrectly. What I did know is that the Board of County Commissioners on my very first meeting upon attending as a commissioner saw documents come through wanting us to sign to reappoint those members of the health board. And it was at that meeting that I said, hmm, I don't know that this is something we necessarily want to just do right now. If we are going to just reappoint people, is there a process for doing this? I'm new here, what's the process? And it was at that time that I started to look around at the statutes and see what, what was the proper process, which I might add because of this, uh, we are reviewing uh, the, the ways and the form and the fashion and the proper way that different boards, some of them that I have already mentioned, how we go about appointing, because a lot of them do, are not large boards. They might only have one or two people on them for obvious reasons. Um, why, why would you start drafting um, changes to exhibit A and not inform the health district or other board members? Because it's a draft. And here we are discussing it. Uh, I would just I would just make a comment that uh, Dr. Cleary's statement, uh, though I think well intended, is very alarmist in in some of the projections that he sorts of sort of projected out that was the intent of of the commissioners in any of this. I mean, I'm not certain how he's drawing those conclusions, and I guess I would just ask him to comment on how are you drawing those conclusions? What what? basis do you have because some of the points you put forward were really uh i think i'd argue sort of reckless to state that that was their intent i, I don't know we have any idea that that was their intent I, I think we should really look back and say what are you drawing those statements from dr cleary so um what i said dr adbury that if the board of health were to accept these things that these these restructuring things could happen. I did not say that they definitely would, but this allows for that. And I have to say that even amongst the, the county commissioners, giving one of them two votes and making uh, all these rules of their power, uh, we could easily see a very different county commissioner um, this fall. If Mr. Lindy is not reelected, um, they could be dealing with somebody who is put in as the chair, uh, who has the exact opposite uh, views that they do. And so I, I really don't think giving two votes to one of them, uh, enforcing this, uh, you know, county commissioner has to be a chair, uh, is a long-term plan that they're going to like. It, it will be a very short-term benefit. But that chapter six, uh, I, I mean, that paragraph six, uh, I'm sorry, that is a can of worms. It really does not include all the laws. And so if those laws are not in place and any committee is formed, those laws will, will not be able to be followed by the health district. That's not you know, just a postulate or something. They're not in there. The, the ordinances of the, the emergency proclamations from the government are not included. And so you have to recognize that if that paragraph is used by anybody with any intent, good or bad, it's going to be a mess. There's no guidance there for how a committee is formed. No, in, no obvious involvement of the board in choosing the committee members in approving whether a committee even exists. There's no um, guideline for implementation of, of committee rules. There's nothing to say that a committee can't have two members and therefore not be held to the Open Public Meeting Act. There's nothing in there that says a, a committee of two can act as the board. And you know, I think Ms. McKinney actually objected to that once before when Ron Anderson and Gail Weaver um, selected uh, Dr. Yucca. Uh, that was two members acting on their own without board approval. And I think we all agreed that we don't like that, but 
that can happen with that paragraph six. And then it goes on to say that if you want to do anything else, meaning all the things that the health district does and all the governor's proclamations, you have to get their permission, but there's no mechanism for that. I mean, would that, and that's why I posed to Mr. Brusick, would that require an amendment, would it require a resolution? Um, that could severely delay things. And there are many aspects of what we're doing right now that could accidentally or purposely disappear if that paragraph were used. And again, I'll say that paragraph wasn't put in there just for fluff. Uh, it has to have a reason. It might not have been a reason that was thought out well. It, and this is where I think that the entire ordinance is weak. We do not have a comprehension of the impact of this ordinance what it's going to do to the health district, what it's going to do to the community, and it would just be reckless to accept something that we don't know the consequences of. Dr. Cleary, are you aware of all the guidance and ordinance and the documents that you were previously running under? Uh, well, so I will tell you that what we've done is provide more guidance than already existed. I, well, I will admit that we needed bylaws Dr. to help Cleary, the Board Dr. of Cleary, Health run. There was a single resolution that, that, uh, that Ryan was able to find. And that was the one from 2018. And I can tell you that Mr. Elliott himself did not know that that document existed at one point and it had to be provided to him as a signed counsel for the health district. This health board has not operated with any amount of guidance not substantive in any way. And I strongly recommend that our next course when we're over this is to create bylaws because this health board needs bylaws more than any other board that I've seen. But to say that this is somehow worse, we're providing more guidance than already exists. And that point needs to be made. You know, guidance is not necessarily good guidance. And if you go back to former meetings, you'll recognize that I've been talking about bylaws since before I even got on the board. As soon as I applied for it, I asked for bylaws. I've been asking for bylaws, rules, regulations for the past year. And we have made proposals that we do need bylaws. Now that's a moot point um, with House Bill 1152 uh, you know, coming up, we're going to be restructured, but we should have had bylaws all along. Just because you wrote these up without involving anyone else does not make them bylaws that we should accept if we don't clearly understand the implications of them. The previous resolution was uh, Commissioner Lieta working with uh, Ryan Ibach, two people. So it wasn't the board. It wasn't previously the board who came up with that resolution. I mean, and, and is that a good idea? No, I, I, I'm I, just I, stating that again, this board has operated differently every single time and we're trying to bring clarity and guidance. If I may, for uh, a point of clarity, uh, ma'am, I don't believe that's accurate. Uh, Commissioner later was working with Ryan Ibach under the direction of the board. Uh, the board was working on having a new process for appointment and that was done in partnership between the Board of County Commissioners and the Board of Health. And so it was addressed by two people. You're correct. They were the main um, creators of that process, but it was addressed. I'd also like to share, you're correct. There are not a lot of violence. That is the way that previous boards wanted it. And so you're asking for more um, clarity and more structure, as is Dr. Cleary, which I welcome. But that is, again, something that could be done uh, by the board collectively. I think, and it provides something, another another topic, which was that when this came up in our previous board meeting, and it was a reason why there's other changes that were made or clarifying statements, because we've had a informal selection committee, as you recall, Director Fresco. And so those are things that need to be formalized. Do you think that um, the ordinance, not the draft that, that you said it's a draft because it's actually a county code. Um, do you think that's the best way to approach the, those changes? Shouldn't they be approached through bylaws like you are stating? Not this 
in the absence of that so i let's let's be clear the county commissioners are acting under others under statute we are the legislative body so we've done as mr brusick has done a very good job of outlining everything that we were legally able to do as legislators now what we do on a board where we have historically appointed people to that is something that we can discuss and that's what we're doing right now and we will and i hope and it seems like dr clear and i continue to be in agreement on some things and one of those is to have a, a creation of bylaws uh, ryan i didn't mean to cut you off if you had a point to make earlier no, I was just going to point out that it was under the direction of the board that uh, former commissioner Leda and myself uh, worked on uh, the, the Board of County Commissioner Ordinance and the Board of Health Resolution that mirrored each other um, so that we wouldn't be in a situation like this. Um, so I just, that's, I just wanted to point that out. Yes, and if I may, uh, Commissioner McKinney had brought up a point about uh, the board um, allowing for a month month extension uh, but that was rescinded. Uh, Mr. Elliott, can you uh, review that process, please, to explain that that was no longer an issue? I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Fresco. What, or, uh, Director Fresco, what was what process do you want me to review? I I'm, think I addressed it, Director Fresco, when I said that I made the motion to strike in the following meeting. Yes, but my point was that once you struck that, that was no longer an issue. So I was hoping that it was an uh, issue up until it was stricken. <laughs> Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. Commissioner McKinney made a motion to rescind the prior motion that had passed. Uh, if I remember right, that prior motion had passed four to three. There was a lot of discussion about trying to delay it. Uh, the motion ended up going. And then we actually set that special meeting on December 17th for two issues. One was the health officer contract. The other one was to go over the selection process for board members. If you will remember, the December 2nd meeting, there was a disagreement related to sort of who was in charge of appointing. There was the resolution that it looks like is up on the screen right now, 2018. And I agree with Commissioner McKinney. I had never seen that resolution prior to that meeting. There was also a discussion from the commissioner's side that they had received legal counsel from the prosecutor's office that it was in fact the Board of County Commissioner's job to appoint. So that was a discussion that happened on the December 2nd meeting. We then set the December 17th special meeting to deal with those two issues, appointment process and also the contract. But at the conclusion then, Commissioner McKinney made a motion to rescind the uh, December 2nd motion that had passed, allowing board members to continue. And if I could interject here, if I recall, Mr. Elliott, you advised the board that that would be a good idea to rescind that vote as if, because not to do so would have put the board in legal jeopardy. And, and Commissioner Lindy, to the extent that that was discussed in executive session or whether that was discussed in open meeting, I don't know. And I wanna caution the commissioners now because to the, the extent that either one of you are discussing issues that were discussed in executive session, that might be problematic. So I, I was not able to go back and review that, but there was a discussion about the issue that had passed on December 2nd. That is correct. It's, yeah, it's not appropriate to talk about the discussion, but the decision was open. No. Yeah, and that, and that vote was, was done. Out of executive session, the board came back and then took a vote on the motion to rescind and it passed. If I remember right, it was six to one. It might've been five to two, I can't remember. It was six zero with Dr. Fun abstaining. I, I apologize. I couldn't remember exactly how it went, but that vote was taken in an open public meeting. Further comment? Oh, uh Ms. Duvall, I, I think maybe I saw you speaking, but you were Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Uh, I also do want to point out that I feel like the Board of Health does have a consensus on um, the board chair having two votes. I, everyone expressed that the way it is written, it, it was not written with the intent of it being in all circumstances. And I just want to know um, if the commissioners agree that the ordinance as written does not say what they intended, then why have the commissioners not taken any steps to correct it? 
I would say that I, I disagree with your statement that it's not applicable for all instances. So one thing we offered clarifying is that in the event of a tie. Correct. So if if you clarify. The simple answer I will say is because if we're going to make any changes, it makes more sense to make changes at once rather than to go back and make one at a time. Okay. And I, and I guess I would offer that, you know, at this point uh, with, with the time we have remaining and another issue on the board still or on the agenda still to look at, uh, we probably don't have the, the time or ability to resolve all this tonight. I appreciate the the fact that the case was laid out by Mr. Brusick and Mr. Anderson as we wish to uh, be able to have our rationale provided as, as the other side was presented in the last meeting. Uh, but I think there is room for conversation, for dialogue, and, and uh, for us to be able to move together together on what this uh, would look like. And Commissioner Lindy, I appreciate that. I, I would say right now that while I covered quite a bit of things at the January 27th meeting, I want to make clear to the board, I have not gone through each of these sections. There's much more to cover on each one of them. If you will remember, we had spent about an hour and a half. And at that time, I sort of walked through the two that were raised primarily by the written comments. And I would disagree with uh, Joe Brusick's statement that I think the two issues, the voting issue and the chair are the most important. Actually, I, I never said that. What I said was, that the chair and the two votes were the ones that got hit, I think on 28 of the 29 written comments. And so I wanted to address those first, but I want the board to understand there is more legal analysis to each of these areas that when we discuss this again, I would like the opportunity to explain to the board some potential further ramifications. Dr. Cleary hit on a portion of one that I see in section six, there are others, but I just wanna make sure we're all clear I did not go through the full extent of the legal, legal ramifications of all of it. I think 7005-030 answers the issues that I raised before. There are other legal issues that I see on each one of these. So that the, ch at the chance that we have this discussion later, I just wanna let this board know, I have more to say on this ordinance and legally and the whole bit as it relates to this board. So I just wanna make sure we're clear on that. So I'd like to ask a couple of questions. Um, first of all, <clears throat> in the last meeting where there was some late play discussion, I also understood as uh, Ms. Duvall did that the reason for the two votes was to break a tie, that that was a primary reason for that being there. And we had a little discussion about that. And I have since you know, reviewed parliamentary procedure according to Robert Schultz of Orders if that's what's being used, not everybody uses that. But in the case of the tie, then the motion, uh, it fails. Uh, in which case, if a motion fails, it can, be, um, uh, it can be resolved. For example, if it's an election, you continue until the election is finished with a new motion. Or if you wanna maintain the sum motion, you can bring it into another meeting and, and discuss it again, take another vote. But that, that's my understanding of, um, you know, in a situation if there's a tie. And in the current makeup of the board with, uh, uh, a number of seven on the board having a tie, uh, unless there is somebody who's absent or abstaining from vote um, for any reason is going to be uh, very rare. Well, not very rare, but potentially rare. I will say that potentially rare. And so I, I just have a question about that. So if, if the, the point of having, I just need clarification. If the point of having two votes is, is not simply for, the uh, breaking of a tie, what is it for? No, I, I met uh, Mayor Byers uh, that it was for a for all instances of a tie, but that only. So okay. I think that, does that, is that clarify? It, it does clarify for me that, that that was your intention was for any instance of a tie. Okay. Um, and then I also have a question about um, the Open Public Meeting Act. I was gonna raise it before Dr. Cleary uh, mentioned that, you know, any board of two. Um, I, I think that, well, I, I could be wrong about this. And according to the Open Public Meeting Act that every board meeting is public. 
So even if it's a board of two, that people would be allowed to be present? Well, you'd have to have a quorum, but the, thank you for bringing that up, Mayor Byers, because um, Dr. Cleary, when he stated that if it was just the three commissioners on a board, that we that would not be a quorum of the health board and therefore would not be, uh, may, that would not fall under the public records uh, requirement, which, and the Open Public Meetings Act, rather, uh, which is incorrect, uh, because the Board of County Commissioners, anytime we meet together in a quorum is required by law uh, to be a public meeting. And so that was uh, that was taken into account uh, when structuring the ordinance that any meeting with more than one county commissioners must be an open public meeting. Thank you for clarifying that. That was my, my thought on that. Thank you. Uh, further comments? Thank you. Go ahead. I'd like to say, Mr. Anderson, thank you. Um, uh, if, whew, I'm glad we're not making any actions tonight because of my <laughs> And I would really like to have opportunity to review as well the uh, 70.46 uh, as it relates to 70.05. Uh, you know, it's the first time I've heard about that. I think it's the first time this of all and many of us heard about that. So I'd really like an opportunity to read oh. through that and reflect on all the statements made uh, by both Mr. Brusick, Mr. Anderson, and Mr. Elliott tonight. And please uh -huh. do take the time to look at all the different structures of the health boards from all of our neighbors across the state. Yes, the, the purpose, uh, Mayor, was is of tonight's discussion was in part to allow uh, every board member, especially new ones and even the uh, ones that have already been here for a while, to review these documents to make sure that we're clear as was stated uh, by one of the board members earlier, every time uh, revisiting uh, an ordinance that uh, something else came up. So we, and all of this needs to be vetted out uh, to the, the bottom of the barrel so that we're, we're all clear on what's uh, happening and how it uh, applies to the board. Uh, and if I may, Commissioner Anderson, I'd like to ask again uh, that, that uh, Mr. Elliott as the health district um, attorney uh, prepare his um, review of that, unless you already have, sir. My review of what? 74-46031? Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, I already gave it to you. It, it was pretty straightforward. So, I mean, I'll, I'll review it again and explain you why it's all about creating a health district. It's what it says. But I mean, my, my comments further for this board will be more directed at other legal ramifications of other sections of the ordinance. But I, I, I mean, clearly the statement from the county that I appreciated very much was like, I appreciate the prosecutor's office saying they're not gonna sue the health district. So that's good to hear. They're not gonna sue the board of health. I guess the question then becomes, I don't know what court situation he's talking about. I mean, unless the county commissioners decide the board to sue the board of health or to seek some guidance from a court about what their ordinance says, I'm glad to hear the county prosecutor is not gonna sue the Board of Health. That would be problematic for this county, but I, I don't know what other versions of court appearances there could be other than those two I just identified. Okay, thank you. I would like to ask if the um, health district has links to the other uh, health districts in the area that we could get that information, you know, not having a lot of time to look all that up. If there were links I could go to, that'd be helpful or if they have printed information they could send over, that would be great. Director Fresco, uh, would that be possible uh, for uh, Victoria or somebody on your staff to maybe uh, make up uh, or provide a list to the, to, to the uh, board members? Sure, under Ryan's direction, we can certainly gather that information and then uh, it'll take a little while, but happy to do that. Yeah. And then we can, we can list it and it can be very clear. What, what exact information are you? Very much, Andre. I'd appreciate that. Uh, Brian, uh, Ryan, uh, connections to other health boards in other in other counties, other other jurisdictions. Okay, just connections, not necessarily information about C them. connections. Connections, yes. All right. I'm sorry if I may if I may clarify. When you say connections, I think you mean links to the links. Yes. To the board to the actual board makeup and composition of each board, or or a or, or a web page or something that will allow board uh health board members to uh follow that path to that to that link certainly thank you very much other comments 
I just like to thank the uh, employees at the Yakima Health District for um, their continued support and um, work that they are doing and providing this information to us. This does come with a lot of pronounced costs to the Yakima Health District administrative costs. And I think um, if we move forward with this without really looking into it, it could potentially have pronounced cost as well um, in legal fees. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from board members? I don't know. Go ahead. I reiterate what Nalia said in terms of my appreciation of the um, of Andre and the staff at the health district at at every level because I work with them, you know, through the city as well, and uh, you know, working with certain health board uh, employees on the Open Yakima Task Force, and you know, uh, partnerships in the community as we move through this COVID situation, and certainly want to be looking at you know at um, uh, other relationships, but. But, you know, I just think you guys do a knockout job at every level, and I just want to thank you for that. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I don't know, uh, Director, uh, if there's time to uh, move on to the uh, to uh, letter B, the health officer recruitment update. Is, do you have, uh, is uh, that? I, I think that we can have a very brief overview if you'd like, but I, 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 I agree, sir, if we're going to be closing at 7.30, it's hard to get into a large discussion on that. So, Brian, uh, Ryan, I keep calling you Brian, I'm sorry. Um, that must be your twin brother. Uh, <laughs> uh, Ryan, if you would just give us a real brief overview of that, because we're coming down on the time uh, of uh, ending the meeting. Sure, I can do that. Um, we do currently have six um, candidates for the health officer position. At the last meeting, it was decided we're just going to go with the permanent position. Dr. Rinnaker um, has withdrawn her name from, from consideration. So that leaves us with Dr. Atterbury, Dr. Bard, Dr. Kate, Dr. Espinoza, Dr. Holshaw, and Dr. Maxwell. Um, in the last board meeting, I, I was directed to come up with interview questions in the matrix. I do have a draft in um, interview questions, um, several questions, about 17. So we would need to, per, um, to narrow it down in a draft matrix. Um, so um, I'd like direction on the board how to proceed with that, whether um, discuss this with uh, Chair Anderson and, and maybe Vice Chair um, Dr. Cleary, and then, and then narrow, it, narrow it down, or how, how you'd like to proceed with that also. Um, it was clear in the last, um, meeting that that all board members would like to be involved in the interviews. So we'd have to figure out how that's going to look, if it's all going to be together, which would then have to be a public meeting or if they'd be smaller groups. Um, we'd also have to decide who would be involved in the discussions. Would staff be involved in the discussions and then be brought to, brought to the, the board for a vote? Um, what would the timing of that be? Um, when would we have interviews? Uh, when would it be? Which board meeting would it be brought up to the board for approval? And then, um, and then beyond that is entering negotiations with the person that was voted as candidate, um, and then a target date for when we would sign a have a contract ready for for um, final signatures. So those are just some of the the direction that that is needed at this okay. time. Could, could you, uh, Ryan, could you, that's a very good list. Uh, could you just uh, send that list out to everybody on the board yeah. so that we can consider all those points and, and maybe uh, has create some thoughts on how the process should be. Thank you. Yeah. And, and Ryan, could you also uh, send out the draft list of interview questions? I'd like to I see would that. just like to state that if that portion is done, that Dr. Atterbury would need to be omitted from that portion yeah, I was going to make the same statement. Uh, please omit me from that email uh, as to not bias any questioning. So, Ryan, let me add, uh, when we went through the process of hiring the new city manager, each applicant actually went through three interviews, one with the community board of residents, one with the staff, and one with the um, a council. And so the other two groups uh, provided their feedback and that information provided to the council as they went into discussion after they conducted their own interview. So that's just one way of, of doing it. I, I don't think you need a, a, a community uh, representative board necessarily, but your staff may want to 
You may have some key staff who department heads who want to go through the same interview process, and then they give their feedback, which then the um, you know health board can can use after they do, they do their own interviews and enter into discussion. I, I just thought it worked well. Yeah, I, I concur with you, uh, Ms. Byers. I think that's an excellent suggestion. I know Melissa Sixberry works very closely with the public health officer. I think she'd be an excellent person to uh, involve this, uh, in addition to maybe Ryan and, and Andre. I'd like to propose that we do not discuss this further until the next meeting so we can discuss it at greater length. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Uh, even though we have five minutes left, I don't think there's enough, uh, unless somebody else has some quick comments. Uh, there's not enough time to get into any more uh, just deep discussion on uh, the two topics we talked about tonight. So uh, I uh, am proposing that uh, we uh, treat ourselves to uh, four minutes early and uh, conclude the, the uh, meeting for tonight. And if there's a, I don't know if we need a motion for that, but I'm going to ask. It's a special meeting. We do. So I'll make a motion so, to adjourn. Okay. I would I'll make second. a motion to adjourn until the next meeting, which I think it's scheduled, it's scheduled April the 14th. The next Four, correct. April 14th. And we'll continue the, the topics uh, of tonight as needed. And uh, it, there's, a, there's a motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? I'm sorry, just to clarify. Um, you said the next meeting is uh, April 14th, but I believe on my calendar, it says March 31st. Am I correct? Oh. Uh, yes. If I may, Commissioner Anderson, what we have is uh, March 31st will be our regular board meeting. Regular board. Uh, and you're correct. For the other board meeting will be a special board meeting. Yeah, special board meeting. Should have been a special board meeting. Thank you, doctor, for that correction. Actually, the special board meetings at 530. Yes. Until April 14th. Yeah. I believe I said that, but I may have meant it. Yeah. So there's been a motion and a second. Uh, any further comments or discussion? Uh, hearing none, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All, all those opposed? Motion passes. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much for Thank such you. a lively discussion and comments. And we'll continue this uh, and get it resolved uh, in short order. Thank you much for, and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you.